Hey guys, we are working on our Ford CL30 skid steer, and today we will be building and replacing the spark plug wires. Stay tuned. So we've had this skid steer for some time now, and it's always been a little bit hard to start. Once it gets running, it runs just fine. We normally have to shoot a little bit of starting fluid into the carburetor to get it running. However, once it's running, it runs just fine. So I'm thinking if we replace the spark plug wires with solid core wires, we should get a better spark to start the machine. So the first thing I have to do is remove the spark plug wires from the engine. And while I'm doing this, I need to make sure I know which spark plug wires are going to which plug on the distributor cap. So I'm just gonna take some tape and a marker and just label the cables as to where they go. And in my case, my cylinders are actually labeled on this metal plate here. So I'm just naming them with the number of the cylinder. Now that I have all the spark plug wires marked at the head of the engine, now I'm just gonna take note of where they plug into the distributor cap. All right, now that I have all the wires marked and I know where they plug into the distributor cap, now I can go ahead and remove all the wires from the spark plugs and how they're connected to the distributor cap as well as the center plug on the distributor cap which is plugged into the coil. And you just have to trace your center wire coming from your distributor cap back down and that one will be going to your coil. Now that everything's unplugged, I can fish the wires out and take it back to the bench. There we go. So I went down to Napa and picked up a set of spark plug wires. Make sure when you're buying your wires, you know how many wires you need. This is for a four cylinder engine, therefore it's four plugs plus a coil wire. So with your wires, you also do get a, a hardware kit. This is gonna include the metal tabs as well as the boots. So we can go ahead and open that up. And for a four cylinder set of these spark plug wires, you should get six of these crimp connectors. The reason for that is the coil wire is not terminated on either of the ends. This end of the wire is for the spark plugs. This other end here is where we are going to be connecting to the distributor cap. Now with this kit, it did come with a couple different options for the boots. In most cases, you can just look at the boot that you took off and make sure that you install the same style boot. Uh, if, if you do need to have the corner boot, it's available, but you don't need to use it. So the first thing we need to do is cut down our new spark plug wires to match the size of the old ones. I'm going to be cutting these wires just a little bit long to make sure I leave myself enough room. So now that our wire is cut to length, the next thing I'm going to do is fit the boot over the wire. Sometimes these boots are a little tough to get on, so I'm just going to spray a little bit of WD-40 to lubricate. And that should slide right on. Now that I have the boot on the wire, I'm going to take a wire stripper and just strip the spark plug wire. And with this style wire stripper, you can just push down on the wire strippers and it should strip it off. Just like that. So now that I have a wire stripped here, I can see that the wire that I have hanging out is just a little bit long for the spark plug that I need. So I'm just going to trim that down. And when you get the spark plug wires out of the box, the length that these are already stripped down to is relatively the same length that you're going to want to end up with. So now that I have this trimmed down, I'll just fold this wire down in toward itself. And I'm just going to take the back side of my crimp connector and place that directly on the wire. Now the spark plug wire inside of the crimp connector only needs to come up to the top of the crimping portion of the connection. It may help to snug this connector in just a little bit so it's not going to fall out on its own. Now I can take my crimpers. Now my very bottom crimper on this tool is a half circle and then a half circle with a divot in there. That circle portion I'm going to be putting on the back side of the connector and the other side with the divot is going to be where the actual wire is going to be touching. So what that's going to do is just snug it down in place. Now I can follow that up with the crimp that is just above what I just used with the point on it. That point's going to be on the back spine of the connector, just like this. 
And when I have that right in the middle there, I can crimp that down nice and tight. All right, now that that is nice and tight, I can just pull on this, make sure it's not gonna be pulling out on its own, which is not, everything looks good. And then finally, you can take the boot, and again, if you need to, you can spray a little bit of WD-40 or, or another lubricant just to get this to be able to move. And then you can pull the boot up to where it needs to be. And there we go, now we have our first spark plug wire built. So now just to test the wire before I put it back on the machine, I'm going to take my multimeter and set it to the 20K ohm reading. And just to test to make sure it's working, I'm gonna put these two connections together and confirm that that zeroes out. These specific wires are solid core wires, therefore they should have little to no resistance at all. This is going to be a little bit different than standard car or truck spark plug wires where those will have a few thousand ohms of resistance. So let's just take a quick look to see what we have here. And we can see that zeroed right out. So now we have our first wire made. We can set this one aside and repeat the same steps with our other three. All right, then finally we have our very last wire, which is going to be our coil wire. In the box with the spark plug wires that you got, there should be one boot that is a little bit bigger in diameter than the other ones. This is the boot that's going to be plugging directly into the coil. As you can see, it's just a little bit bigger than the rest. So first thing on the coil wire is I'm just going to take one of the distributor cap boots and feed that on there. And then I can add a crimp there. With this side complete, now I can cut it to length. Now taking the larger of the boots, I'll feed that onto the other side. Now I'm just gonna take my multimeter and go back through each of the wires and just confirm I have good continuity and resistance. Okay, now that all my wires have tested out just fine, I can go ahead and replace them back on the machine. Now that all my spark plug wires are connected to these spark plugs, I'll just reference the notes that I took earlier to make sure I get them back in the same spot on the distributor cap. And you should feel and hear these click into place. Once all my spark plug wires are connected to the distributor cap, the final wire to connect is the coil wire. Be sure to take note with the coil wire, the larger of the two boots is going to be the end that connects to the coil. And like the spark plug wires, just connecting it to the center post on the distributor cap. There we go. If you had to remove any clips, tie downs, or zip ties that were holding the wires in before in order to take them out, now would be the time to secure those back down. And there you have it. That's how we replaced the spark plug wires on our Ford CL30 skid steer. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content.